If you want to know what a balance fin length is, that's the right video for you. Let's jump right into it. Hi there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Gabriele, I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and my goal is to help you to become a better pilot or get a better understanding of the aviation world. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you will not miss the next videos. Before starting, if you have any thought or any question throughout the video, make sure you leave a comment below. I will help you out because for me it's important that you understand 100% this topic. Okay, let's jump right into it. You have a balanced field length any time your takeoff distance required equals your accelerated stop distance required. It may seem complicated, but let me explain you what it is. Before, uh, in order to understand in full this topic, we need to understand and know the meaning of the accelerated go distance and the accelerated stop distance. All right, so the accelerated stop distance is this distance that you will cover when you, let's say, you start a takeoff, you have an engine failure, you apply the brake and you stop the aircraft, all right? This is the distance that you will cover on the ground. It's called accelerated stop distance because accelerate, you start the acceleration, you have the problem, you stop the aircraft and that's the distance, accelerate stop distance, all right? So let's say you are on the threshold of the runway, on board of your aircraft, you are ready for takeoff, you apply thrust at 50 knots at low speed environment, okay? At low, sp at low speed at 50 knots, you have an engine failure, so you close the thrust lever, you apply brakes, you raise the speed brake and you stop the aircraft. As you can imagine, in this case, your accelerated stop distance is super short because the engine failure happens at the beginning of your takeoff run, all right? If we do another example and you think you are on the, on the aircraft, on the threshold, ready for takeoff, you apply thrust, and when you are very fast, let's say 120 knots, at the last point, you have an engine failure, you decide to stop the takeoff, what will happen is that because the aircraft has got a lot of energy, it will take you a long distance before you can actually stop the aircraft. So, in case of an engine failure at high speed, your accelerated stop distance will increase, okay? The higher the speed at which your engine failure happens, the longer will be the accelerated stop distance, okay? So, this accelerated stop distance will change depending on the uh, engine failure position, okay? Depending where the engine failure happens, you may have a longer accelerated stop distance or a short Short, a shorter accelerated stop distance. If the engine failure happens at the critical speed, which is the speed engine failure, which is slightly before V1, your accelerated stop distance will be the greater, okay? Will be the, the longest, okay? So now that the accelerated stop distance is clear, let's go into the accelerated go distance. The accelerated go distance is this distance that you cover from the acceleration for the takeoff run all the way down to the 35 feet screen eight at the end of the runway, okay? So let's imagine that you are on board of your aircraft on the threshold, you apply thrust for the takeoff, and at the certain point you have an engine failure. Okay, but instead of stopping the aircraft, you elect to continue. Okay, you decide to continue. So what will happen is that you will spend a, a certain a, a portion of the takeoff with your engine, you will have an engine failure, so you will keep accelerating with one engine only, you reach the VR, the rotation speed, you uh, rotate the aircraft, and then when you reach the 35 feet screen 8, this is your takeoff distance required, okay? Or also called accelerated go distance, okay? So let's imagine, let's make a few examples. If you are, let's say you're on the threshold again, ready for takeoff, you apply thrust, at 50 feet, so low speed, you have a, an engine failure, but instead of stopping the aircraft, you elect to continue. What will happen is that your accelerate go distance will be very long because you will spend the 80% of your takeoff, for example, 80% of your takeoff time with only one engine. So your acceleration will be longer if you compare it to an aircraft with two engines operative, because the aircraft with two engines operative will have more power, will reach the rotation speed earlier, and will reach the 35 feet screen eight earlier, compared to you, in your case, that you continue to accelerate with one engine only, what will happen is that your rotation will be later and your screen rate will be later. So the uh, earlier the engine failure happens, the longer will be your takeoff uh, accelerated go distance, okay? 
let's say again that you are on the threshold now, you apply the thrust, you reach the critical speed, which is the speed engine failure. The engine failure happens at that speed, but instead of stopping the aircraft, you elect to continue, what will happen is that your rotation, you will reach the rotation speed and then you rotate. In this case, your accelerated go distance will be shorter compared to the example that we made before because you, you in this case you will spend most of the time during your takeoff run with two engines so you've been accelerating and you reach the VR very quickly because you have two engines okay and then only a small portion of the takeoff run will be made with one engine all right so as you can see these two distances the accelerated go distance and the accelerated stop distance they vary depending on the location of the engine failure okay so if we go back to the balance field length definition that we made before we can say that the balance field length is when you have the takeoff distance required equal to the accelerated stop distance okay let's jump into the whiteboard so i can make this concept clear Looking at the top here, we got the accelerated go distance and the accelerated stop distance, okay? Let's start with the accelerated stop distance. Imagine that you are on board of the aircraft, you apply thrust for the takeoff, and then you have an engine failure, okay, at the critical point, which is the speed engine failure, okay? So by V1, by V1, you actually start to apply brakes, reduce the thrust, extend the speed brake, and so on. So by the time you stop the aircraft, in the case at the end of the runway, you are here okay so this is your accelerated stop distance required so is this length okay fantastic talking about the accelerated go distance on a balanced field performance which is this case you are on the on the threshold you apply the thrust for the takeoff you arrive at the critical speed you have an engine failure but for whatever reason instead of stopping the aircraft you elect to continue so you will reach the v1 you will reach the vr you rotate the aircraft and then you will reach the 35 feet by the end of the runway as you can see these positions here are the same so whenever you have the takeoff distance required which is the distance that uh, uh, you covered from the acceleration for the takeoff all the way down to the screening of 35 feet equals this the accelerated stop distance required which is the distance from the acceleration for the takeoff to the stop in case of rejet takeoff when these two distances are the same you can say that you have a balanced field length all right the balanced v1 is Whenever you have a balanced field, you have a decision speed, which is called the V1, and I made a separate video, we'll make a link in the description below. Whenever you have the V1 on a balanced field, that is a balanced V1, because that V1 will actually, let's say you have an engine failure really at the V1, so if you elect to continue or you elect to stop, you will cover the same distance, okay? So you will reach the 35 feet at the end of the runway, using the same distance that you will, it will take you to stop the aircraft, okay? This is the balanced V1 on a balanced feed length. Okay, I want to conclude this video saying that anytime you've got uh, an engine failure before V1, you should stop the aircraft, okay? What can happen is that if you have an engine failure very, very close to V1, I can tell you that that is the tricky part because you have to choose whether to stop the aircraft or continue, and this decision has to be taken in very quickly, okay? What I do normally when I fly, what can I tell you after flying more than 10 years uh, on the, the Boeing 737, I can tell you that the jets is always better whenever you get very close to the V1 to continue than actually reject the takeoff. Let's say you are super close to V1, an engine failure occur, you should be a go minded, okay? You should be a continue, you should go, you should continue, you should take the aircraft in the air because you can take the aircraft in the air, you can do the checklist, you can make the aircraft safe and secure, and then you're gonna have a full runway length for landing, okay? If you instead stop the aircraft, as long as you actually start the procedure of rejecting the takeoff before you run, you, can, you are completely right. But what I'm telling you is an a, a experienced, uh, experienced tip, okay? If you stop the aircraft, you st if you're starting to stop the aircraft right at the V1, you will face a lot of problems such as high brake temperature because you will try to stop an aircraft, a very heavy aircraft, because you're gonna be full of, full of fuel. So the aircraft will be very heavy, it's gonna have a lot of energy, you will try to stop this aircraft, so the brakes will be very hot, okay? Sometimes you may even have fires on the brake, okay? Depending on the conditions, okay? And as well, studies have shown that if you do a high speed rejet takeoff, many times the pilot, they end up as well doing a running excursion. So instead of 
making all this, uh, facing all this problem, if you just take the aircraft in the air, you do the checklist and you come back, it's a lot better, okay? You have a lot of fuel on board, you do the checklist, you get, you get ready, then you, sh you fly a nice approach for, and a landing, okay? So this is my, my experience tip for today, okay? If you like the video and if you took something out of it, please give it a like and consider subscribe to the channel. Again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will help you out. And also go to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. And I'll see you in the next one.